What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to the next example dealing with transformation. So if f of x equals x squared, we've got to sketch the graph of y equals negative three f of x minus four plus two. So to do this, to graph this function, I'm gonna be following those exact same steps that I went over in the overview video. And in that same video, I introduced the mapping formula, which is here. And then I went through an example where we use this mapping formula. So I'm going to be going through the exact same process, except this time notice that the parent function is x squared. Also notice that this example is given in a sort of different format than the previous example. Notice the previous example, it just told us graph y equals negative the square root of two bracket x minus four plus five. So notice that in that previous example, the parent function, which was the square root of x, and then all the transformations, they were sort of combined, versus here they are separated. So I actually want to take a little time and talk about these two different formats that you can get these questions in, because you're going to see both come up. So the first format is where that parent function and the corresponding transformations are separated. So that's like this example here that we're given. So notice that the x squared, the parent function, and then the transformations are separated because notice we have this negative three f of x minus four plus two. But really, depending on what f of x is, this could be applied to anything. So because it's x squared, really how this is going to look is like this, right? We would just put that x minus four for this x, the negative three goes in front and the plus two goes outside. But this parent function could have been anything. What if it was uh, the absolute value of x, right? They could have said, that's the parent function. These are the transformations. And then if they were combined with this parent function, the way it would look is negative three x minus four, absolute value of x minus four plus two. So this kind of general transformation format, whenever you see this f here, it means it's in a general format. And then because it's just an f here, we don't know what f of x is. It could be applied to any parent function. In this case, it was stated, but again, it could be absolute value x, could be square root of x, could be whatever. So that is one way where the parent and then the transformations in this general format, they are separated. But then another way is that the parent, let me kind of split these up, parent and transformations are combined. And that's like this example, right? Where the parent function, it wasn't explicitly stated, kind of had to figure out as the square root of x, right? So the parent, func the parent function and the transformations are combined. So if this question, which was given in this first format, if it was given in the second format, it would just say graph y equals negative three x minus four squared plus two. And then we'd have to see, we'd have to look at this and then kind of see what the parent function is. Okay, we could tell because there's this power of two here, parent function is x squared and then get the transformations versus here, it was stated. Right, so just be on the lookout. This question could have been asked in this format as well. And you're gonna get both types of formats. And sometimes students can get confused. They'll like, they won't even look at this parent function. They'll just look at this and then they'll try to like graph this. But you can't graph this alone because you don't know what f, what the parent function f of x is, right? Because it's in this general format. You need to know what the parent function is if it's given in this format in order to apply those transformations to that parent function. Versus when it's given like this, you can just go ahead and graph that, figure out what the parent function is first, 
and then uh, just do the transformations. All right, so just be on the lookout for both of those formats. Okay, so now what we can do is uh, let's go through these steps. So number one, what's the parent function? Well, in this case, it's given, it's x squared. And so what we can do is we can make a table of values for x squared. And we went over x squared in a previous video. The table of values was negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, and then we had four, one, zero, one, four. So that's the parent table. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this table and transform it depending on what the transformation values are. So we know in general, the general transformation format is this, like that. So if we apply this to here, what are the transformation values gonna be? Well, notice that the A value is negative three. What's the K value gonna be? Notice there's nothing in front of the X here. So the K value is actually one because we can take this and we could rewrite it as one bracket X minus four plus two. Right, so notice that that K value is one. D value in this case is four. Kind of realizing now that I'm using a lot of the same transformation values that I used in the previous example. So then the C value is two. This one at the end. Right, so those are our transformation values here. And so now what we gotta do is we gotta take that parent table and then transform it through this formula using these transformation values. So all the x values are going to divide by k, we're going to divide by 1, so all the x values are going to stay as x, but then we're going to be adding that d value of 4. All the y values are going to multiply by negative 3, and then we're going to add 2. So what we want to do is go through these x values, put them through this formula, go through these y values, put them through that formula, and then we can just graph this. So Going through all these, negative two plus four would give us positive two. We'd have three, four, five, six. All right, if we put all, take all these x values, put them through this formula, we'd get these corresponding x values. And then all these y values put through that formula, so negative three times four is negative 12, plus two gives us negative 10. Then we'll have negative one, and then positive two, negative one, negative 10, like that. Okay, now one thing I wanna mention, I mentioned this in the previous video, is notice that this zero and zero, it represents the vertex for that parent function x squared. And this zero and zero, it got transformed to which point? It got transformed to this four and two. So that means that four and two is going to be the vertex for this graph, our transform graph. And you can tell if we combine these, we'll have what? Negative three X minus four squared plus two. Notice this is in vertex format. And if you remember from grade 10, vertex format four and two would be the vertex, which is what we got when we transformed that zero and zero, right? So it all corresponds nice and smoothly. So now what we can do is we can just take these points here and graph them. So, yeah, it goes up to two. So one, two, and then we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six. Right, so four and two, that's up here. Then we got five and negative one, which is down here. Then we got six and negative 10, which is gonna be all the way down here. All right, so just taking these, then graphing them. Three and negative one over here, and then uh, two and negative 10 down here. And so we end up getting this parabola here. Sorry, not the best looking one, but that's how it looks right here. 
Okay, so what we did was we took x squared. This is not to scale, by the way. But uh, we took x squared, and then we, um, we transformed it and got this function. And notice that we can go through each of these transformations, and we can kind of see what happens. So this a value negative 3, k value of 1, remember when there's a k value of 1, there's no transformation on that. I went over that when we discussed the k value in a separate video. So that we can leave out. Then we got a d value of 4, then we got a c value of 2. So the a value is negative 3. So what happened here? Well, because it's negative, there was a reflection in the x-axis. And because it was 3, it was vertically stretched by a factor of 3. Okay, if you're not sure what these transformations are, make sure you go back on the website and watch the videos where I go through each of these transformation values separately and what they mean, the different cases they could all run into. D value of 4 means it is what? It goes 4 to the right. And then a C value of 2 means it goes uh, 2 up. So reflection in the x-axis, taking this, reflecting it, and then we vertically stretch it, take this and stretch it. So it's gonna look like that. And then we go four to the right and then two up. So we end up getting this graph over here. If you wanted to get the domain and range, so the domain is what? For a parabola, it's just xer. The x values can be anything because this keeps going on forever to the right and to the left. So there's no restriction on the x values. In interval notation, we'd say they're from negative infinity to positive infinity. And then the range, it's yer, uh, but the y values have to be less than or equal to 2, right? Because that is the maximum point, that is the vertex, like that. So all the y values basically go from negative infinity to positive 2. And it's inclusive of that positive 2, so there's a square bracket there. All right, so the graph, transformations, domain, and range.